What's up guys? So it's another beautiful day here in Los Roques and today we are gonna go and see who can fix our propeller, our dinghy propeller because the hub is spinning, it has like a rubber and the hub keeps spinning so you can give it throttle and the propeller doesn't move uh, so I have to go really slow so that it doesn't slip so I'm gonna go pick up Donny which is the local fisherman that we spent the whole day yesterday and then we're gonna go into town and see if there's someone that can drill the holes and put some screws in it. The boat's pretty dirty, we gotta clean it, but yeah, it is what it is. We're Alejo and Andrea, and we've been living on our sailboat for the past two years. We've sailed from the United States all across the Caribbean to arrive to this area, Los Roques. Hakuna Matata! It means no worries. So guys, today here on Hakuna has been a cleaning day because it's just bad. Like you just, it just takes over. The dirt takes over. So Alejo has been removing stains from the fiberglass, which we've been, we've had to do since we hauled out the boat. And we have some really bad stains. As you can see that one over there. We had some really bad ones here you're in the sugar scoop on the stairs and now as you can see it's completely white super beautiful looks amazing this thing is magic but you use it with one of those magic erasers the white little sponges well what whatever's left over of the sponge right yes um and yeah not sponsored it just really works doing it right now on that big stain i spent the entire morning just cleaning inside the dogs haven't been on board in like six months and we still have <laughs> hair from the dogs <laughs> everywhere coming out as my, we clean 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 and it just keeps coming out so i spent some time just fixing the kite room it's just super messy looks a little bit better so we can enjoy and go snorkeling without feeling like we're living in uh, cape. If you haven't noticed, the people in yachts, the people in boats, there's always scrubbing going on. Whether it's inside or outside, there's always some cleaning to do. How do you feel about all the work that needs to get done in the boat? Yeah, we're we're doing it little by little. <laughs> Is it what you expected when you bought a boat? Of how much work it would be, or less, nope. or more? More. Like how much more? Like. Like a hundred percent more, like two hundred percent more. I thought I was gonna be drinking margarita, you know. <laughs> so we are moving to uh, uh, that's more like uh, more south of the Roques. So we're moving to this little islands right here. Uh, we're just gonna we're gonna go explore, see what we see, see what we find. Okay, change of plans. We're going to the island with to Saki Saki where they do kiteboard because we see some kites. So we're here thinking that we caught a fish and the boats over there got caught in our line. What happened, please? We fished the boat. <laughs> so we have a 60 pound line on the 30 pound fishing rod. Yeah. But I mean, it worked. So the line didn't rip, and which is good. That's what we wanted. So a couple of months ago, we fished something. I don't know what it was. Something really big, and it ripped our line. And we had a big, massive couple situation because Alejo was like oh shoot and I was like pissed because majority of the plastic in the ocean is just fishing line so I didn't want to contribute to that so I was like no we need to buy stronger fishing lines he looked and did so much research on like a really strong fishing line and I think the fishing line it worked it worked it passed the test we can fish a shark now or a whale or something and it will hold if it held a boat I'm pretty sure it's gonna hold right yeah so we have tried to anchor two times but it's very rocky. It's, it doesn't in the na in the navigational charts you don't you can't tell exactly where to anchor. So you have to like kind of test it. You also want to make sure that you're not damaging the coral. So between avoiding the corals and trying to find a sandy patch, it's 
very hard. So we are moving to a place where we can see a sailboat over there. And we're gonna try to anchor there, see if that's an option, so that then we can go by dinghy to the island. So as you can see, that's all sandy patches, sandy patches over there. So you really have to find your way in because you don't want to get stuck. So we know we can try to throw it here. It really all depends on what you're looking at. So for instance here, over there where it looks almost white, right? We know we can't throw it there or we might be able to throw it close to there because it's very sandy, but it's also very shallow. So if we throw it there, we'll be able to just drag back and still stay in the area where we're gonna be over five feet, five foot deep, five feet deep. So yeah, that's what we're going to try to do and see how it works. It helped people. We got it. After three tries, three tries. So now we are going kiting. We're going to the island over there. That island over there is called Saki Saki. Very popular among kite boarders. to kiteboard but the wind didn't hold. We cannot complain at all. It's a beautiful, wonderful day. And we left Hakuna over there. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see that little island it's called Saki Saki and now we're going to another place what we use here for navigation is like Google Maps so today the idea is to move to a spot where where we can go diving so here in the buckets the Navionics charts they barely work because they just put everything as like 12 feet and then like little patches of grass but they're not accurate so I recommend not looking at the charts too much and just going with Google Maps. So thanks to this reef right here, the, the Roques has flat water. So you can see it's a big reef. So this is a whole wall here. This is like a fairy tale. <laughs> Maybe you look like you're in a movie, like they're putting like a fake background on you. It's amazing. It's amazing, right? Yeah. The last thing that we told you guys is that we had a damaged propeller. Um, it was spinning um, and it wasn't just kind of going with the engine. Nobody could do welding there. He couldn't find a solution. The guy that was supposed to fix it, it's like he kind of just never told the guy to fix it. The, the guy that we were with, Donnie. The, the Donnie. The fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this extra propeller but the thing inside you can see like yeah. that wasn't the right pattern of the one that we have I don't know why not but yeah so this is what broke so you can see this bronze part inside yeah. mm -hmm. and then it's rubber right so bronze rubber and then the propeller when that rubber breaks, the hub starts spinning when you put it in gear. Uh, there's a couple of ways to fix it, just temporarily. Once that breaks, you can either change the whole assembly or just buy a new propeller. Might as well buy a new propeller because they're cheap. Well, not, they're not cheap, but yeah, they're not expensive. So the solution we did for now was... Because we couldn't find another propeller Yeah, anymore. yeah. Here in Los Roques, there's no parts for boats. 
So what we did was I drilled three holes. So one here. So it goes all the way from this to the to the hub, right? So three holes, one, two, three. And then we put three screws that attach that hub to the propeller so it doesn't spin. So I'm gonna show you guys our propeller. It's already on the dinghy. Because you forgot to record? I forgot to record and then I got really bad. <laughs> it's just a temporary fix. I don't know how long it will hold, but for now we needed the dinghy to work. If not, we can't even go like two miles per hour. Yeah. So you can see one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here. That's a temporary fix that you guys could do uh, just in case your propeller is start spinning just to get you out of somewhere like the Bahamas if you can't find a propeller or an island or somewhere that's a temporary fix while you get another propeller we don't even have paddles on the dinghy so we're gonna put some paddles just in case and we're also going to take our satellite phone just in case because the dinghy is not too reliable you don't know it you know could just like stop working at any time and we don't want to be just like drifting and there's nobody here you know the more south you go basically the town is here in this island and there's people around here but once you go past this area all the way down here there's nothing once you go past this area here there's nothing nobody can help you we are preparing for our dive picking up the regulators this is our toys room I'm trying to find the regulators which are here what do you know the last time we did scuba diving was what was in oof, a long time ago in Karyaku, that's true in Karyaku, which was really nice as long as we have all the safety precautions we're taking the satellite phone we're going to be um, diving with the dinghy just in case we don't want to get lost and lose the dinghy we just want to make sure that we're able to just get up there and have the dinghy up there so we don't get lost um what else are we doing we put put the battle boards on the dinghy and we're putting our flag our school diving flag up the corals were so alive and so beautiful we had to move from where we were anchored because seems like not sure if it was the wind or, or the current or exactly what was it but we started turning and we were going on top of those rocks over there now we're gonna go snorkeling those corals that you see over there might have a lot of life they look very beautiful guys so we have just made the decision to go back to where we were I know we're changing decisions like in five minutes and every other second um, because we just kind of moved out. It's about 50 feet here and you can't see anything at all. It's already like 4.30, it's not worth it trying to move right now when the sun is not, you know, allowing us to see because the sun's already kind of going down. So we can't really see the bottom and it's not worth it because we might get stuck on a rock and run aground and there's a lot a lot a lot of corals and a lot of rocks here we really messed up we really 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 messed up we shouldn't have moved we can't see anything now can't see the bottom can't even see her maybe yo tampoco puedo ver mucho pero pues dale so you can see the rocks right there so we can't move the boat we the only time we can move the boat is from 11 to 2 because the sun is up and we're able to see everything and nothing is on the maps, so. You yeah. think that was very risky? Yeah, not such a good idea. Así la cagamos. Casi que la cagamos. We're gonna spend the night here. Yeah. 
I think that was a good call. Uh, yeah. We would have ended up in the rocks for sure. We couldn't see. We could just we couldn't see anything, see right? It. Like nothing at all. And it's deep. See. So you can see like it's 40 feet deep and then all these rocks come up almost to the surface like to this yeah. and you might see like some little waves breaking there but Nothing. you can't see shit And you can see like blue super dark ocean just like the way we see right now over there looks super super dark and then suddenly you see like little tiny breaks of waves which means like there's a massive big coral there which is why the waves are breaking don't want to risk it, so we're staying here. It's still beautiful. So we moved to another little island, like a little sandbag. You can see it there. Some people came and put some tents. We're gonna go kiteboarding. We have about from 16 nuts. 